introduce everybody. We have the commander of the VFW, Pat Nealon. We have uh, the commandant of the Marine Corps League, John O'Doherty. We have the commander of the American Legion, Bill Marinaccio. We have with us Mayor Allen Beach, Deputy Mayor Mike Hawkshurst, Trustee Anne Marie Reardon, Trustee Rob Baccio, I apologize, and Trustee Laura Ryder. Today we also have Sergeant First Class Marrero, United States Army, from the Olympic Recruiting Office. And uh, we also have with us Chief Paladino. We have the Chief uh, of the Olympic Fire Department. We have the Director of Fine Arts, Mrs. Schaefer, uh, new this year, taking over. And we have Superintendent Burak also here. And also with us today is former County Legislator, Fran Beckett. So we're going to move on. We're going to have our former county legislator, Fran Becker, come up and lead us in the pledge, please. Thank you, Commander, for this honor. I really appreciate it. Veterans and uh, present military excluded, please, everyone, would you kindly remove your hats, rise, and place your right hand of your heart over your heart, and please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you again. Thank you. We will now have the opening prayer. There's a tendency for everybody who's as lucky and blessed as we are to wake up on third base and think we hit the triple. But the fact is that every one of us here is here because of men and women who gave their lives for our country. They believed in something bigger than what they saw. They understood that there was more than just meets the eye. And they were part of something so great in which we now cherish the fruits of their sacrifice. Lord, let us be people who never forget let us always look back with gratitude and give thanks for the shoulders on whom we stand now as we move forward and create a wonderful village here in Limbrook and a wonderful country here in America. Continue to bless our heroes, Lord, those we have lost and those who serve us this day. And let us all contribute in our own way to making this the place you need us to be, to build your kingdom in all that we do. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We will now have a mayor from the mes a message from the mayor. Good afternoon. Good morning, actually, right? Good morning, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Welcome to today's ceremony, and thank you all for attending. I'm honored to be speaking with you today on such an important occasion. We're here today to honor our service members and remember the sacrifices they made in honor of duty and country. As Abraham Lincoln observed more than 150 years ago, this extraordinary war in which we are engaged falls heavily upon all classes of people, but the most heavily upon the soldier. For it has been said, all that a man hath will he give for his life. And while all contribute of their substance. The soldier puts his life at stake and often yields it up to his country's cause. The highest merit, then, is due to the soldier. This respect we give to our fallen heroes speaks to the importance we place on the service of freedom. A Greek philosopher once said, the bravest are surely those who have given the clearest vision of what's before them, glory and danger alike, and yet, notwithstanding, go out and meet it. We're here today to honor those who went out to meet their danger, to remember their achievements, their courage, and their dedication, and say thank you for your sacrifices. Thinking of our military heroes who join us today, and those who are only here in spirit, a person can't help but feel the awe by the enormity of this experience. We stand in the midst of patriots. Memorial Day is a day we come as, together as a country. 
Remember our servicemen and women who answer America's call and service and call to service and paid the ultimate sacrifice. Memorial Day is the time for Americans as one body to stand up and say, thank you. We remember you. We are grateful to you. I thank you for joining us today. God bless our fallen heroes and God bless America. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We will now bring up Jaden Harvin, senior Lindbergh High School. Jaden's going to be attending Binghamton uh, this, this fall. He's going to sing the national anthem. Thank you, Jaden. Once again, we are gathered to honor the more than one million Americans who, from the American Revolution to the current war on terrorism, that have made the supreme sacrifice. They died so that we could continue to cherish the things they love, God, country, and family. They continue to be the guardians of our freedom. During the past year, 13 U.S. service members died during a terrorist attack in Afghanistan. They unlikely will not be the last American heroes to make such a sacrifice, but they represent the best of a generation. Not only are these diverse men and women forever in our hearts, but for those who know, knew them, they are forever young. They came from every background, yet they shared a common goal, to serve America and make life better for others. It was the same spirit that has driven our veterans throughout our history. It is hard for us, the living, to equate ourselves with those who made such a sacrifice. The surviving loved ones do not have to look very far to find their heroes. Nearly 7,000 American men and women have died while fighting the global war on terrorism. Many were parents whose children have a void in their lives. Spices will continue to miss their life partners. Parents will never stop grieving for their heroic sons and daughters that they died way too early. Nobody can replace these fallen heroes. The loss felt by Gold Star families is forever. We are also reminded on this day that brave men and women have always stepped forward to take the oath of allegiance as members of America's armed forces, willing to fight and, if necessary, die for the sake of freedom. So today, after the parade and ceremonies have come and gone, and we each go our separate ways to celebrate the day, let us reflect on the freedoms we have and those who made our way of life possible. They truly have and continue to be the guardians of our freedom. Thank you, and God bless America.
We'll have a message from the commander of the VFW. I'm young. I'd just like to say thank you for coming today and helping us you know, celebrate those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. When you go on about your day, picnics, barbecues, beach, whatever you're going to do, take a moment to remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you. Now we have um, another speaker today, uh, Sergeant First Class Marrero, United States Army. Good morning, uh, everyone here attending. First and foremost, let's begin today by recognizing all those among us who have been part of the great brotherhood sisterhood we call the U.S. military. Our veterans, active, active duty service members, guardsmen, and reservists. Um, one of the Army values is selfless service, right? We give to ourselves, not just ourselves, but our country, our God, also our neighbors, all right? So that's something that, uh, that we, there are just no words to, to, to bring up or words to say the sacrifice that these men and women made um, as a current service member, I stand on their shoulders, they're heroes, to me, they're legends. So uh, take this day to take the time to say thank you uh, to a veteran uh, for their sacrifices to this great country. Uh, and that's all. Thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you, Sergeant. I appreciate you coming out with us today. So I... I uh, I didn't mention somebody that's on the dais today. He's our Grand Marshal today. <laughs> His name is Angelo Lamonico. I'm honored and privileged to introduce today our Grand Marshal, Angelo Lamonico. Angelo... <laughs> Angelo is a Navy veteran who served in the Korean War, also known as the Forgotten War. He enlisted in 1951 and served a total of eight years in the United States Navy. When Andy returned home, his service to country didn't stop. He served as the commander of the Limburg VFW post 2307 in 2000 and filled many chairs before that to get to that point. Quick funny story is I, I actually ran against Andy that year for junior vice three years prior to that. And, uh, and I, I lost that, that election by one vote, and uh, a good Marine buddy of mine who's with us today, filling in in the rifle detail, didn't show up for the meeting. <laughs> so the next day I said, Ed, Ed Dunningham, what happened? I lost by one vote. He goes, <laughs> good thing I didn't show up, you would have lost by two. <laughs> so congratulations on your victory, Ann. <laughs> so he also presently, presently, sits on the board at St. Albans Hospital and, and Veterans Home. He runs the gift shop there and many other recreational events for the veterans to include ball games, bingo, make sure they have haircuts and proper hygiene, and uh, he just continues to give. Andy's 88 years old. <clears throat> Andy, also upon coming home, became a police officer like many veterans do. He joined the NYPD and served over 20 years, retiring in 1980 to get his money's worth. In 1972, while Andy was on patrol in Harlem, his heroism continued off the battlefield. A fellow officer in a neighboring precinct was ambushed. He was shot with his own weapon, and Andy, while on patrol, on his birthday, April 14th, 1972, rushed to the scene just like he did in 1951 to serve our country and career. The veteran and Andy kicked in. He and other patrolmen were able to get patrolman Philip Cardillo in Andy's RMP, and Andy rushed them to the hospital. Although Philip Cardillo succumbed to his, his wounds six days later, Andy was able to give Cardillo that time to take his last breath with his wife and infant son. <laughs> and his family on his side. I mentioned this story about Andy in the NYPD because I've known Andy since 1996 when I became a member of the Post. And only over the past few years have I learned of Andy's part in this story. Even though I read the book, it's called The Circle of Six, about this incident, um, there's a lot more to this story. I suggest reading the book, The Circle of Six. If you want more information, I'm not gonna get into it. 
But Andy is not alone. Men, many veterans don't talk much about what happens on the battlefield, whether home or abroad. It sometimes takes generations to find out about pure heroism that most vets will say, I was just doing my job. Veterans are a rare breed. I may understand, Andy may understand, many people here may understand, but many won't. There are many reasons why so many vets take a hard stance on the disrespecting of the American flag. For many, it's the last remembrance of a fallen comrade, the last thing a family is handed and expected to accept as a price of a life given to a country. Andy lives that every day on April 14th, on his birthday. He knows, he knows what it's like to have to live with him. And who knows what other secrets he might be living with. Thank you, Andy, for your service at home and abroad. And it's an honor to have you here with us today. Thank you very much. I want to start the, uh when I got the message that I was going to be the Grand Marshal, I was surprised, moved, humbled, and honored. And I spoke to Pat, and Pat said, well, you know, just make a little bio, and then, you know, make a little short speech. You know, 22 years ago, I was standing right here as the commander of the VFW 2307. As the commander, I had to make a speech also. Now, I haven't said most of what I'm going to say, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to read what I, what I wrote. My name, Angelo Romanico. I am a Korean combat vet. I joined the Navy in 1951 and served four years active duty, four years inactive to reserves. I am a father of two and a grandfather of five, also a great grandfather of four. I have been married to my wife, Teresa, for 66 years. I was a New York City police officer for over 20 years, from 1959 to 1980. The last time I was here on this stage was when I was a command, as I said, 22 years ago in 2000. I want to thank the members of the VFW, 23 and 7, especially Pat Cardone, who selected me to be the Grand Marshal of this parade. I am deeply honored. Recently, I received a card from American Legion Anywhere, which is in our presence right now in American Legion, in regards to Memorial Day. I would like to read it at this time. Memorial Day is an American holiday observed on the last Monday of May honoring the men and women who died while serving in the United States military. Originally known as Decoration Day, it originated in the years following the Civil War and became an official federal holiday in 1971. Many Americans observed Memorial Day by visiting cemeteries or memorials, they hold family gatherings and participate in parades. Unofficial, it marks the beginning of the summer season. They are perhaps the great, no greater words in our language than courage, love, honor, and sacrifice. Our democracy endures because of those who accepted this great responsibility with courage, love of country, and their fellow man. Many have served with honor and made the ultimate sacrifice. Today and every day, let us honor them with our love of country and each other, our remembrance of this, their great sacrifice. Greater love has no one in this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Remember, remember them this Memorial Day. Courage, love, honor, and sacrifice. Thank you, and God bless America. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Andy. And it's our honor to have you here. We will now have the singing of God Bless America by Tony Ann. in 2005, 17 years ago. We also remember Patrick Gallagher, another Limburg native, United States Marine Corps of Vietnam, also killed in action. We honor those people today, as many others. And uh, I just want to touch before we move on to the re-ceremony and to the closing. Limburg is very, very fortunate to continue to have and have had leadership that will never forget its veterans and their families. Limburg residents like yourselves who are out here today come out in support of veterans, not just today, not just vet, uh, Veterans Day, but every day. It means a lot to all the veterans here in town. I'd also like to have a special prayer, if you got time today, for another Marine, Ed Habit, not doing too great, 90 years old, Say a special prayer for him today, too. He's going to some prayers. Wreath detail. Prepare to present the wreaths. Detail. Attend. And salute. Present the wreaths.
What is the greatest prayer one can say? The ancient holy one said two words. Thank you. However you call your God, however you personally pray, we can all share in the gratitude of the lives we remember this day and the future they have procured for us. God bless our village. God bless our country. Thank you. Marines, prepare your volley. And salute. Again, thank you all for coming. This concludes our services. I have a special thanks to Chief Palladino, the Limbrook PD, Superintendent of DPW, Philip Healy, Assistant Superintendent, Larry Bean, and all the DPW crew. Uh, Mrs. Adriana Schaefer from the Limbrook School Music Director, Limbrook TV, the Fire Department. Again, none of this, none of this day happens without the whole town. So I just want to thank, thank you to everybody and the mayor and his leadership. Thank you guys very much.